Hello, viewers, and welcome to a bonus Season 4 episode with the Cascadia Overland crew. My name is Ansel, and that pretty lady next to me is my wife, Allison. This episode is all about preparing for our incredible overlanding journey in our 4th Gen 4Runner. But first, let's start with a quick recap of what happened on Season 4. On Season 4, we start Episode 1 near Seattle, Washington, and begin our overlanding trip into the mighty Cascade Mountains. We play in the snow, check out the German-style village of Leavenworth, camp in the canyons next to a huge lake, drive up north towards Canada, make a detour to a head and spot, cross the border and camp next to a river. Then we drive up a steep mountain and park in an abandoned mine. Very cool. So. You can see a lot happened in Season 4, and if you haven't checked it out yet, you don't want to miss it. You can binge watch the entire series after watching this video. There's actually tons of packing and planning that goes into these overlanding adventures, so we thought we'd put together an episode of just preparing for an overlanding trip adding some new and cool things to our Fortune 4 Runner, like a Prinzu roof rack and a rooftop tent, and just working through some of the problems that I encountered. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, there is a certain excitement that goes along with finally finishing packing because, whoops, because there's so much preparation, so much packing, so much roof racking, so much um, organizing before this trip that, and usually there is at least a little bit with every trip. Um, there's that, that smile that you get when you're like, you know you're on your way. Well, I know this is a Lego version of our vehicle, but this is how the Forerunner looked like before we embarked on this overlanding expedition. It's going to look slightly different by the time we're actually going to get there. All right, so my task is to remove that Yakima roof basket. The only problem is that there's this massive storm raging outside. There's thunder, there's lightning, and of course, the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of rain, but I'm gonna get to it. Gotta remove this, uh, this basket because I must have put a really good price on it when I listed it online because I've already got four or five messages asking me for it. So I'm assuming it's gonna get sold pretty quick here. So I gotta go do this. All right, here's the uh, roof basket and it's super, super easy to put on and get undone. So there's just these uh, four tie points on each side, um, not tie points, screw points, and uh, four on that side as well. And then of course taking these uh, traction boards off as well that will be put uh, somewhere else now. You know you live in Vancouver when you just complain about this massive thunderstorm and five minutes later, no joke, five minutes later, it's uh, bright and sunny out, like legitimately nice and sunny. It's like a nice warm spring day. Good for me. Okay, so that took me all of about 10 minutes maybe by myself, uh, just taking the, uh, the bolts out of both sides. Uh, now I basically just have to take it off because it's not secured anymore on uh, on either side. Now I'm gonna try to do this myself and try not to damage the vehicle or hurt myself. But as you can see, these are basically pads that slide onto the crossbars so I can pull it as far as I can towards me and then uh, slide it off that way. Let's see how that goes. Oh, it's actually really light. It's not heavy at all. Great success. All right, folks, I'm at Overland Garage and this place is like a candy shop. This is in Burnaby, BC, by the way. The kind of stuff in here makes me drool. I mean, everything, ARB, um, tires, wheels, max tracks, worn wenches, claymores, everything you could possibly want. It's beautiful. But I'm here for something specific. You're about to find out. It's Christmas time, boys. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is Jerry. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things we need to do to install the Prinzer roof rack is remove these old uh, crossbars and rails. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I've never actually done this before, so it's a little bit of a trial and error. I'm sure this uh, just pops off though. So you just have to go along the, uh, along the sides of this piece and pry it open with a pry bar or a screwdriver and it comes off fairly easily. I'm gonna say it comes off easily and then I'm gonna stand here and struggle with it, aren't I? There we go. A little bit of pressure. Uh, and then there's two bolts here, which I'll show you as well, that need to be removed. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing on all four sides here. Here are those two bolts that I was referring to that need to come off. And once these are removed on all sides, so there's two, four, six, eight, eight bolts. Once these eight bolts are out, then these uh, rails and the crossbars will just come right off. These crossbars are also um, just twist-ons in here. So fairly easy to remove the two of those as well if I wanna uh, remove those separately as well. But I'm just gonna leave them on. So this is a two-person job. So the joys of living in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I took everything off and I'm supposed to go to a different place right now, but now it's raining. And as you can see, there's holes here that needs to be siliconed around. Uh, so it seals so water doesn't get in. But now that it's starting to rain, I think I'm just gonna put some duct tape on it and uh, hope the, no water gets inside the headliner because there's nothing between this now and uh, below it would be the headliner. So I gotta do that temporarily while I go to a different place and come back. So there's a reason why we do an inspection of our vehicle before going on a long trip because if you signal left, you can hear that it's completely fine. If you signal right, it's flashing really quickly, which means the uh, turn signal light is out. Um, my vehicle has this feature. This is a 2003 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, some vehicles don't have this feature, so it's important to test these kind of things before you leave. All right, so this is the super busy shop of OK Tire in Surrey, home of KB Auto Tech and Adventure. Speaking of which, there is KB Auto Tech and Adventures. Tacoma. My baby needs surgery. Thank you, Kelly. The Forerunner desperately needed a new CV axle and I was about to go on a trip and I didn't have time to do it myself. So I also took it to OK Tire in Surrey to get tire balancing done and asked them to cut the end of the muffler. Once I was back home, it was time to get started on the Prinzer roof rack as you can see me doing here. The Prinzu is an expensive piece of equipment, but nothing beats the peace of mind that comes with strong weight distribution to put heavy loads on the roof. When it comes to weight on the roof, there's two different types that you have to understand, which are dynamic weight and static weight. Dynamic weight ratings are about how much weight can be put on the roof when the vehicle is moving. Static weight is how much can be put when you're not moving. So like when you're sleeping in a rooftop tent. The Prinzu roof rack comes in a very long box and some of the box had to be put on the armrest between the passenger and driver's seat. So if you're picking one of these up at a store or a brick and mortar location, make sure your trunk is clear and there's nothing else in there so you can fit this big box in there. The Prinzu comes with very simple packaging as sheets of aluminum, bolts and Loctite. That's basically it. There are no instructions provided, but to be honest, if you need instructions to assemble this roof rack, perhaps you should not attempt to assemble it at all because it's very extremely easy and very self-explanatory. You simply line up the two sides, there's a front bar, and then there's the crossbars that just need to be Loctited and then screwed in. It's very, very simple. So all of this can be done alone, but I was on a time crunch, tired, and this is much easier when there's two people to do all the things that are involved. Lining up the crossbars can especially be annoying to do alone. Soon enough though, Allison came to the rescue to help me out. 
So we have a whole bunch of uh, gunk and everything in the in the rails here, a bunch of dirt and stuff. Uh, there's four of these four of these chunks. So I'm gonna get the vacuum out now and just uh, try and vacuum and clean out all that dirt before we put the rack on. The next thing that needs to be done is we're gonna put the rack on. There's four attaching points where the uh, rails go. So there's two bolts on each side. This is a bolt and this is a washer. Now in other videos, I have seen that they're supposed to have locking washers, but there's no locking washers in our kit, none whatsoever. But they did provide us with Loctite. So I'm gonna put Loctite on each one of these. There are also these spacers, black spacers. I hope the camera can focus. There's these black spacers that go below the rack. So I'm gonna put silicone around them, put these on, put the rack on, put the washer on, put the nut on, and then tighten it down. There's also no torque specs, so I'm just going to tighten it pretty damn hard because it's probably never gonna come off. So I'm gonna tighten it pretty hard. Also, you're not supposed to use a torque wrench on the roof because if something gets stripped or if you cross thread or whatever, there's no going back. So I'm gonna have to do this by hand carefully. Here we go. Okay, so don't tell Allison, but I have different cleaning standards than her. So I'm gonna have to re-clean these, put silicone on. So basically, silicone's gonna go around here. This is gonna go on top and then the rack and then the bolt. Finally, it was time to put the roof rack on the vehicle. Again, this can be done by one person since it's fairly light and you just have to push it on the roof and align it. If you use a tarp, there's no reason one person can't do it. However, having a helping hand is super awesome. The rack itself is very light, but if you don't use a tarp or something to cover it, you could end up scratching the roof quite easily. We only nicked it once and honestly I wasn't worried about it because we have a million pinstripes and scratches on this truck going through heavy, heavy bush. <laughs> Alright guys, I like dead ass lied to you. I'm definitely going to use a torque wrench to tighten those bolts because um, it's late. It's like 8.30. I've been out of the house since 11 this morning. So I was up early as, as well, just getting things started. But I'm gonna tighten these down and then we'll be, and we'll be done. Hell yeah! Some quick last minute things. Just uh, putting this Adventure Trail gear bag back on and uh, Allison's making it happen. <laughs> you getting frustrated? Okay, another last minute thing was changing that blinker uh, blinker <laughs> indicator light, um, which is super easy because if you take a look here, uh, I just reach in and it's right over here and then just twist it off and put a new one on. So because we're Canadian, our gas is quite expensive. And whenever we find cheap gas, I fill up our jerry can. So literally the last thing I need to do before we leave is put gas in the car to get us across the border where we can then find cheap American gas. Yay! Hey, we're on our way to an adventure. So our first step is going to be crossing the border, which we're very used to doing. Um, next step is going to be stopping at Mike and Jessica's to uh, pick up our little package from them. And then I think we're gonna stay the night at their place, go for dinner with them. And then tomorrow we will be truly, truly on our way. There. Okay, and we have arrived at the first uh, little stop here. Got to slow down as we go through the border right here as we enter Blaine. Yeah, this is the Pacific border crossing from uh, Vancouver area, well, Surrey really into uh towards blaine exciting okay so we did it we uh, just uh crossed into the usa uh it was a really fast uh border check uh took less than five minutes just wanted to know 
where we were going and if we had any firewood. So don't bring firewood into the US, they won't let you do it. So uh, we'll get some uh, here when we, when we make a pit stop. Right Dante? Right Dante? Oh, and you should probably have um, like rabies vaccine records of your dog. We always have them, we've never been asked for it, but that's just something that they recommend keeping in your vehicle is like vaccination records and rabies records for your dog. Pro tip, man. Hello, friends. Hola. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Do you want to come camping with us? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of? Yeah. Okay. Mike and Jessica are not coming with us camping, but... Why not? We have That's wedding okay. planning to do. Wedding planning. Also, Mike has now fixed our dented um, exhaust pipe. Thanks, Mike. Get half a beer in me and I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> This is a rooftop tent. It has to go from there to there. See those two little red caps? Yeah. Pop them and press the light. So these are our best friends, Mike and Jess. You may have seen them in our episode titled Trail Clearing in Washington. Mike and Jess were nice enough to gift us their rooftop tent. So just wanted to take a moment and thank both of them. We love you and thank you very much. Mike and Jess also showed us how to put away the tent and then put it up within a few minutes. Honestly, it looked very daunting at first, but it turned out to be quite simple. This is a limited edition Tipui tent from before Thule bought them out. I believe Thule still makes these Tipui tents, but this one is the OG. Taking it off the Tacoma was pretty easy, but putting it on the Forerunner was no simple task. Definitely takes four people to lift this tent because it's large, heavy, and awkward. There's very little space between the crossbars and the Prinzer roof rack and the Forerunner's roof. Mike actually originally suggested that we remove the crossbars, attach them to the tent, and then put the whole thing on the vehicle afterwards. But then we decided, nah, we can do without. In hindsight, that was the best advice that I can pass on to anyone. You should remove the crossbars, attach them to the rooftop tent, and then the entire tent with the crossbars should go onto the vehicle. It didn't take me and Mike a very, very long time, but it was slightly frustrating, and we ended up with a few scrapes and bruises. In the end though, it was all worth it. The vehicle looks great. Once again, huge shout out to Mike and Jess for this amazing gift and helping us through it all. We couldn't wish for better friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't checked out a season four yet, go binge the whole thing and make sure you subscribe. See you next time.